Hello dear friends, today in this class I will give you an introduction to the chain drive. So we will look at two types of power transmitting drives, one using the roller chain, this one and the second one using the silent chain. We will look at some of the most common reasons why they fail and also uh, the advantages disadvantages basically these two silent chain as well as the roller chain are both are positive drives they always transfer the almost completely they will transfer the power from driven pulley to driver pulley but that is not the case of bell drives in bell drives there was a power loss due to the slippage happening between the belt and the pulley and that is not here it almost all the power get transferred from the driven pulley to the driver pulley and also it is used in the low speed applications where high torque is required and it can vary the speed by adjusting the uh, driven driver and driven units and another advantage is that more amount of uh, sorry it can transfer power to various units which are located apart from the same motor that is another possible uh, advantage of this chain drive and another disadvantage is that it needs good lubrication i will come to that later but these are some of the advantages and disadvantages obviously cost is also on the higher side that is obvious now let us, uh, I'll come back to this slide again and I will explain all the failure uh, patterns after discussing <coughs> about the, uh, the various shape of the chains. See what exactly are the constructional features of the chain. See it consists of an outer plate, you can see here it's an outer plate, it contains a bearing pin and over this bearing pin a roller will come. So the roller is free to rotate over the bearing pin or this bush. This, there is a bush over which it can easily rotate. This roller can easily rotate over this bush. And it consists of the inner plate and the outer plate. Usually uh, it is fitted together by the concept of interference fit. It is like that. So or when all these things get assembled together it will look something like this. So when two links are un when one link is connected to another the entire assembly will be something like this okay so now let us discuss what exactly is the pitch pitch is nothing but the linear distance between the two adjacent bearing pin it is given here it is a distance between the two adjacent bearing pin and the roller diameter is nothing but the diameter of the roller it's very clear from the name itself this is the roller width and this roller is one of the most important element in a chain drive because this roller is going to continuously engage and disengage with the uh, sprocket. This chain is going to clash with the uh, sprocket. It is going to lately rub with the sprocket. So this roller has to rotate freely and this is one of the most important part of the chain drive. Now, uh, when you have a chain like this and if you <coughs> if you pull this chain to and for push and pull your the chain you can see a slight extension happening to the chain that is called as the clearance or else it is also uh, uh, referred as the offset so offset length is very much required for a chain in order to flex over the sprocket so that is it cannot be uh, if it is not having the offset it is very difficult to get it engaged to the sprocket so this offset is very much important when we take the case of a chain drive so uh, moving forward i have given here some nine type of chain links so let us discuss one by one this is the first one is called as the r roller link it is the normal shape of a chain link and the shape of the link is the plate is 8 I think you all know the reason because this help us to reduce the 
material without con compensating the strength that is the reason why we are going for this particular shape and it has got a roller connecting link or a coupler link this given here coupler or a connecting link the purpose is to join two ends of a chain because when you buy a chain you will not be getting it is in a particular length obviously sometimes the length will be more so if that is the case you are supposed to reduce the length of the chain after reducing the length you have to join two end of the chain that can be achieved by using the coupler link this is a side plate and this is another one this is also a coupler link but it has got a spring clip over this so it is called as SCL if it is having a quarter type slip fit then it is called a CCL if it is called a screw type <coughs> it is called a CCLM and these six are coupler links but the last three are not they are the offset link so there is a small difference between offset and a coupler offset link is used to increase or decrease the length of the chain it is not used to uh, connect one because offset links are generally weaker members so it is not used to connect but if in a, an application where you need to increase the length of the chain by adding a one link length then the option you have got is to use the offset link this is a one link increase here if you use this it can have a two link increase or decrease something like that so offset links are used in that purpose whereas the coupler function is something different I think that is very clear now moving back see when a roller chain fails it may be one of the several kind of a metal fatigue that can be a reason for the failure one of the main reason is the fatigue failure so most frequent cause of breakdown is nothing but the lack of lubrication that is the reason why I told you I will explain this later so lubrication is a very important aspect when we use a chain drive so when there is a fatigue field you can see the cross section here cyclic load is happening over here if there is no particular uh, or good amount of lubrication a fatigue can occur okay so the oil must flow freely into the joint the oil must flow freely into these joints into these joints it has to flow directly by gravity only so if the load is very high you have to go for pressurized lubrication or else drip lubrication is sufficient that is more than sufficient but even the use of lubricant is also another issue you cannot simply select an oil for the lubrication suppose if you want to have a lubrication at a, at a room temperature then you will be going for a say 30 grade oil and if you want to have a lubrication at hot conditions then you will go for a lubrication oil of SA50 and if it is at cold conditions like minus temperatures then you will be going for SA10 oil like that this is how we are going to lubricate it so if you look this cross section I think this is the most common area where you can expect to have a fatigue failure in a chain link the another one which I have not the figure is not given here the another type of uh, failure oh, sorry uh, one more thing is that uh, this failure usually occurs when the roller chain is operating at high speeds which constantly hammers the roller on the sprocket that is the main reason and the other kind of failure is nothing but the crystallization failure happening in the uh, material itself now this is a molecular disturbance of the metal in the chain when it is operated in relatively high stress corrosive condition or when it comes in to near to a uh, plating solution something like that so metal cracks are acid ruptures from the inside any sign of metal fatigue indicates that the chain should be replaced if you have a fatigue failure or any signs of a fatigue failure definitely the chain has to be replaced generally that means replacing the entire chain not just the individual segments that's because in most applications roller chain wheels eventually evenly throughout its length so the wear happening on the chain drive is uniform throughout the length one link link will not go undergo a high amount of wear compared to the other no it won't be happening like that so replacing a few 
worn cracked sections will not generally increase the life of the chain as a wall when inspecting the chain for wear or when replacing the chain that is broken or is worn okay so replace a few worn cracked sections will not generally increase the life of the chain as a wall when inspecting the chain for wear or when replacing the chain this is broken or worn be sure to inspect this spro sprocket for debris in the teeth inspect for the wear and for damage this is how the inspection has to be done installing a new chain on a worn or a dirty sprocket or running a worn chain on a new sprocket will cause rapid wear of the new chain or the new sprocket so what usually done is if you are to replace a chain you have to replace the sprocket also along with the chain sprocket is the tooth element in this so you have to replace the sprocket along with the chain that is the usual methodology because even if you change one that will not serve the purpose and moving forward I have to uh, tell about the polygonal effect polygon effect see what exactly is polygon effect see when you consider a four sprocket chain sorry four tooth sprocket this is how the chain is going to enter into the sprocket so you can see here this is nothing but a chain link length pitch length something like that so we know that the maximum velocity is nothing but r omega so what is the maximum velocity the maximum velocity is going to come when the roller is at the extreme position see here at this position this is where the maximum velocity you can express what is the reason because it is rotating at the constant speed the only varying parameter is what r so here you have got a maximum r value d by 2 so the maximum value of velocity is going to be r omega or else it is called as the d by 2 omega now but the minimum velocity is going to come when this is in this particular orientation so what is the value of v, v minimum it is omega into d by 2 cos theta by 2 cos theta by 2 theta by 2 is nothing but the angle of articulation that is called as the theta by, theta by 2 so this is the v minimum and now if you take the ratio of the speed change the equation is going to come as 1 minus cos 180 by n why the 180 by n comes because here we have only four segments engaging on a circular the circle is nothing but the pitch circle diameter so now you look in this figure here you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 tooth on a sprocket so when the number of tooth increases teeth increases on a sprocket we can see that the variation of r decreases so by decreasing the variation we can decrease the variation of velocity and thereby we can have a constant power transmission that is the key concept of polygon effect so by looking here we can understand that 180 by n nothing but n is the number of teeth on the sprocket so as the number of teeth increases the theta value decreases theta value decreases means what this variation decreases so when the variation decreases the power transmission become much more smooth this you have to keep in your mind is a very important term that is in the working of a chain drive but we cannot have a really large number of chain sorry uh, teeth on a sprocket because you have to consider the link length also so you have to match both these aspect you have to design this sprocket based upon the chain length link length everything like that okay now if we look at the uh, sprockets also we have got four different type of sprockets one is a type a which don't have any hub on both the sides the type b has got hub on one side and type c has got hub on both the side 
okay but actually this is not the type b1 this is the type d1 this particular one is actually the type b the reason why i told b is nothing but type d is called as a detachable type this is a detachable type because you can see some threaded here it is internally it can be used for varying uh, dimensions of the shaft anyway these are usually the type of the sprockets now let us discuss about the other type of chain which is nothing but the silent chain this is a link length is given here silent chain now this type of chain is often called as timing chain because it, it is unique shape and design this type of chain operates more quickly sorry quietly than the other kind of chain when the individual links in the chain may contact with the teeth and the sprocket the sound will be compared to the less it's like two gears meshing one familiar application for this type of chain is called is in the auto wheel application it is something like a gear meshing with the another the design is something like that and the major major application is in the automobile industry the main area of where on the uh, area of of wear on this chain is in the pin and the most manufacturing uh, is in the pin that has to be very clear because the pin is the one which is going to wear out more and another issue with the chain drive is nothing but uh, different manufacturers has got different type of chain like there is no standard for this so usually this silent chains are not interchangeable because different manufacturers uses different pitch length as well as different spro sprocket tooth designs so if you want to have a substitution definitely you should have a stock within you an additional one additional links or the chain should be there with you usually but nowadays uh, the practices are being done so that uh, you can have an interchangeability uh, between the uh, various manufacturers the entire chain will have to be replaced if the chain must be made shorter or longer timing chain also includes the uh, guides in the chain uh, see suppose if you, usually this uh, silent chain has got different layers so sometimes there can be a center line which is called as a guide chain so if there is a guide chain that guide will help to keep the chain intact without uh, going away from the prescribed path of operation this is a short note regarding the uh, your silent chain and in the next class we will focus on the design procedure for the chain drives okay i think the basic concepts are clear so let us stop here thank you